What's going on, YouTube? I'm that clone guy, E, and this is Simply Put Sense. And on this channel, we talk about some of the best and worst fragrances in the world of perfume. And my goal is to help you smell amazing, but not common. So please hit that subscribe button and that notification so you know when these lives happen. And if you didn't know already, these lives happen every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the one and only Bergdorf Goodman Department Store in New York City. Um, I hope you're all blessed. I hope you're all well. Um, what's going on, Rich Mitch? What's going on, Carl? What's going on, Clown Balls? <laughs> Clown Balls. That's too funny. Um, Vertuesco, what's good, my man? Um, hope you're all blessed. Hope you're all having a really, 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 really good day. It is crazy hot outside, so I hope you all are staying cool. Um, and, yeah, staying cool. Uh, I'm also curious, guys. What's your scent of the day? Please let me know in that comment section. Um, so, guys, last week I was at the Awesome Maker Hotel. I spent like way too much time in the perfume room in that area in the hotel. Um, I had a blast, I had a blast. It's definitely an amazing, an amazing place for people who love perfume. If you're a fragrance fanatic like I am, <laughs> you're gonna absolutely love your stay at the Maker Hotel. Uh, it's just, it's an experience. It's hard to just, it's hard to talk about it. It's an experience. And I love the idea of connecting fragrance with, with a vacation, you know? It's a very novel idea that this hotel is doing. I think it's one of the first hotels in the world to associate the experience of spraying fragrance with the memory of a hotel, loca a, of a hotel stay. Like, it's brilliant. It's such a brilliant, brilliant concept. So um, definitely want you all to consider checking out the Maker Hotel uh, in Hudson, New York, if you're looking for an awesome getaway for a fragrance fan. If you're looking for a fragrance getaway, that could be it. And now would be the perfect time to go because that pool is beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, I, what's your, what's your sin of the day? What's going on, Bullock? Bullock and company. I love it. What's going on, my man? I hope you're well. Um, I'm blessed, guys. So what is your scent of the day? I wore Jacaranda by a brand called Natura Brazil. Jacaranda was a fragrance I used to talk about a lot in my um, before I stopped my channel for a bit. Um, it is a really beautiful green, fresh fragrance with papyrus and spicy notes. It's a very spicy, clean fragrance. And I layered it with Crystal Pistol the unfortunately discontinued fragrance from Dias and Durga. So I sprayed those two together. Later on in the day, I wore Ingenious Ginger by Goldfield and Banks, and I layered it with Libertine by the maker, so I was smelling fresh and clean all day. Brisk, brisk, brisk. Okay. <laughs> scent of the day, scent of the day, Creed Green Valley. Green Valley? Really? Rich, let me find out. You have a fragrance I never heard of from Creed. <laughs> I don't remember that scent. Never heard of it. Don't recall that fragrance. Um, oh, man. Clown balls. Come on, bro. You're killing me with your fragrance and your name, bro. Gear Ness. You get a round of applause, my man. That is a seriously sick Fragrance. I really love Guernet. Guernet is one of the best florals, well, one of the best fresh florals that a guy could consider. You know, a lot of fragrances that are floral focused, they come across a little on the pretty side. Guernet's floral literally smells more handsome than pretty. It's a really, really well done fragrance. Guernet is constantly overlooked and overrated, um, underrated, especially now. It was getting a lot of attention before in the fragrance community when fragrance influencers were like more passionate and not about the business side of things because Guernet isn't paying you to talk about them. I don't see that happening. So a lot of people aren't talking about you if they're not getting paid. So that's, that's, the, um, that's the interesting thing about Guernet. But the fragrance is seriously sick. And it's so well priced, you know. Um, Guernet also makes a soapy fragrance for men 
That is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, Gurness is sick. A really, really, really great underrated brand in my opinion. Um, yeah, guys, so today's video is about a brand called Henley Perfumes. And it is a independent niche house. And my goal, guys, is I wanna start talking to you guys about um, not only fragrances that we all know and love, but I also wanna start talking to you about fragrances What's going on, Judd the Stud? <laughs> Dope name. Um, I also want to start talking to you guys about fragrances that most people ignore, most people don't even talk about. Um, I want to focus my attention also on independent brands, and I want to start unleashing awesome independent brands on my audience, you know? Because honestly, there's a lot of, I love luxurious perfumes, but I'm really a fan, and I'm more so of a fan of fragrances from brands that are that are making high quality perfumes, but that aren't the most popular brands in the space. So we're gonna be talking about a new line, well, not a new brand, because this brand has been around for I think five or six years. And I found out about it from one of my really, really cool friends in the fragrance world, and he is the fragrance concierge. Like I literally did a live stream with him not too long ago. Um, I'm just gonna call him David. Uh, I'm not going to butcher his last name, but if you check out my, um, my YouTube videos like a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with a fragrance concierge that started a business where he literally has clients that like he hounds for, like he will learn like your style of fragrance, similar to what I do in this store in Bergdorf Goodman. He'll learn your style of scent and then he'll cater to your style with options so that you don't have to waste your nose and time trying to find things on your own. Literally what I do here and what I do all the time. Um, but he put me on to an amazing, well, to a brand that he considers amazing. And I am, I have to say, he has really, really good taste, and I trust his nose. Uh, so when he told me, bro, you have to check out Henley, I was like, who? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, no doubt. So I went and got a sample pack, and this is what it, this is what it looks like. It came in this, and I'm ruining it with my green screen. There we go. <laughs> um, it's green, so, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um... This is a, uh, a really, really awesome, awesome, awesome sample pack. I found it very interesting how they delivered it. Henley himself, his name is Hans Henley, the perfumer and the CEO, the founder of this brand. He actually wrote me a hand written letter thanking me for purchasing the Discovery set. Um, very, very, very personable, um, very warm letter, and I really appreciate that touch. That really is a touch you don't get outside of like the indie niche brands. So um, they really, really value people um, who stumble on them because let's, fa let's face it, that's the only way you find brands like that is to happen to stumble on them because they're very, very hard to find. But you will be able to find this brand clearly on the internet, and I was able to get this sample pack, but I, I believe it was around 40 something dollars. I'll show it to you. Um, but yeah, I, I was really, really curious to find out about the brand because, as I mentioned, a friend of mine is, he stands by them. And when I say David stands by this brand heavy, um, I was like, I need, to, I need to check that out. So Henley Perfumes, is uh, so this brand again was done by a brother named Hans Henley. Um, the line started in 2014, so it's a nine year old brand. And this brand specializes in small batches made by the man Hans Henley, like he makes his own fragrances. So he's an independently taught perfumer as well as an independent brand founder. And I think that's insane. Um, I'm very inspired by perfumers who teach themselves. Um, my man Peter from Fragrance View, John Pegg from Kerosene. These are all people who I really, really, really have a lot of admiration for because they didn't just they didn't just keep their passion for perfume at just um, reviewing. You know, they went further and uh, they really, really, really put their foot in it. And so. Um, Henley Perfumes, Hans Henley, he's the brother who makes this fragrance line. Everything is blended by hand and bottled by the same person, like a very small operation, very, very small operation. 
These are operations though that I, I'm, I'm really curious about. These are the brands that I'm really, really interested in more so lately than ever. And I have to tell you, I am excited to try this man's collection of fragrances. He's also um, a New York perfumer, a New York brand. This brand is literally from Brooklyn, my home borough in the city of New York. And um, I have to say, I am excited to try this line. Now, they make very small batches. I don't know if batch to batch things were slightly different. Um, I, would, I would be shocked if that was the case. Uh, but I'm really, really excited to try this collection. And let's get into this. Let's just like go in. Um, let's just go in. So opening this sample pack, I see four, I see nine fragrances here. Oh, let me get my strips ready. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so got the strips, got these nine fragrances. I thought there was only going to be eight in here. So I'm actually impressed that I got nine fragrances. Whoa. I want to go, I'm going to go to the um, Henley website. And we are going to figure this out. I am really excited to go over this line. Yeah, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were eight listed fragrances in the discovery set and I have nine fragrances. Hmm. Interesting. And you know what's also interesting, guys? Just fascinating stuff. I'm going to show you my screen. Um, the interesting thing as well <laughs> is, is that, yeah, there looks to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There looks to be 10 in this picture, so I'm a little bit annoyed. <laughs> now I'm just playing. Um, there looks to be 10 samples in this picture, but listed there's only eight samples in the sample pack. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, guys, so this is the sample pack that I purchased. It was $55. Um, this is not an inexpensive line. You know, I don't expect it to be. But they, from what I'm told, smell really, really good. And you know what I'm really, I'm hoping, but I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful, but I'm hoping this is in the sample pack. Uh, this fragrance is called Bourbon Extray. I love fragrances that are very, very boozy. And so I am really excited to see what these sample packs are doing. So <laughs> let's get into it. And um, one of the things that I also noticed about this line is, is that a lot of the fragrances in this line were highly, 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 highly regarded um, on Parfumo and Fragrantica by the few people who rated these fragrances. So I just randomly pulled out a fragrance called Amora. So Amora, according to Henley, is um, on the website, and I'm going to let you guys see this also. So this fragrance called Amora has fragrances, well, it's expect expectation subverted, confection crystalline, a sweet release, conjured fruit preserves wrapped and twisted around balms and cosmetic Artifice, <laughs> stone fruit, mixed berries, rose absolute, blonde tobacco, sweet resins, musk, musk complex, and ambergris. I got to tell you, this sounds very, very interesting. This sounds like something I would like to know about. So I'm excited. I already sprayed it. Oh. Okay. Um... Definitely sweet. Definitely. Wow. Um, I definitely get the fruitiness. I definitely get the mixed berries and the, um, and the fruitiness of it. It's a very fruity fragrance, but there's a lot of warmth as well in this scent. So oh, that's very interesting, a very complex experience. It's jammy. It has a jamminess to it. Now, there's also rose in this, but it doesn't smell like um, like uh, Oud Satin Mood. It doesn't smell like your standard rose fragrance. 
But essentially, this is a rose scent. The rose is really, really prominent, but it's not screaming rose. I don't get air freshener from this rose. I don't get grandma's soap. I don't get like grandma's bathroom. It's a very, very complex, almost boozy experience of rose. I'm also noticing a freshness as well. I really like this. Ah, Amora. Very nice. We're starting well. Um, we're off to a good start, guys. Amora smells really, really nice. Uh, the next fragrance is going to be called Blonde. And I'm randomly choosing these. I have no idea what to expect. Um, but the next fragrance is called Blonde. And... Oh, I like this one too. Oh, this one is really cool, guys. Like, these are all very, very niche. They, they smell... Oh, this is a this is a very interesting scent. Wow. So, let's look at this one. Henley's Blonde. <laughs> Wow, I like it. I like this too. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I don't like everything, guys. I don't want you to think that, but I'm honestly, I'm really into it. And for the last two, the last two exposes where I've talked about um, Savoir Faire and now Henley, amazing independent brands that I never smelled before. I gotta say, I'm liking this too. This I've smelled before. It reminds me of. It reminds me of something like this is in a world of perfume that I've smelled and it's a very beautiful experience of flowers, fruit. So the fruit in this fragrance, cantaloupe, and that's it. Um, but there's also jasmine, osmanthus. Oh, yes. That's definitely osmanthus I'm smelling. Osmanthus is interesting because it smells like apricot sometimes or peaches almost. But this one, I get almost like a dried apricot experience that's kind of waxy and leaning leathery. And that's definitely, definitely like the experience of Osmanthus. It also has suede iris root or orris, sandalwood, musk complex and ambergris as well. The second fragrance I've smelled from the brand with ambergris in it. And I definitely smell that fishy amber green in this scent. It is in the background, but it's kind of like a, um, like a low hum over the scent. Very, very interesting, guys. What's going on, Catch My Whiff? Good to see you, brother. Ah, Papa Bear, my man, he made it. Thank you so much for coming through, brother. Okay. Yeah, that's, I like it. I like it a lot. That's really nice. Wow, I can't wait to see how that dries down. Okay, so, so far we're off to a good start. I'm just going to bust through these because there's nine of them and I take so long describing things and blah, blah, blah. It can like hold me down. I'm really excited about this one. So I'm going to wait for that. There's a fragrance that he designed that I'm really, oh, yes. Oh, there's two in here. So I, so David explained to me that he doesn't think that one of the fragrances that are coming in the sample pack was going to be one of the scents that I really was excited to try from the brand, but he was wrong. And I'm so glad because I got the fragrance that I've been wanting to try from this brand and it's here and it's definitely in the sample pack. So I'm so glad it was mailed in this sample pack. Because I've been wanting to try this fragrance. It's cons right now, this fragrance is sold out. So I can't even get it. But, you know, hopefully he'll be making new batches of it very, very soon. So let's get into the next one. The next fragrance is called Mist. Mist by Henley Perfumes. So Mist sounds interesting. And that's Mist with a Y. M-Y-S-T. Ooh, that is so interesting and niche, guys. Oh, I like this. This is 
this is definitely not a likable fragrance when I when and when I mean likable, I mean like this is not a fragrance that you're gonna wear to have people saying, Oh my god, you smell amazing. Unless they have amazing taste. Most people don't have good taste in fragrance. Most people have very, very basic, basic taste in perfume, you know. Um, mostly because most people don't take the time out to explore fragrance to expand their horizons and build their taste, you know. Um, so most people have crap taste in fragrance. But most people, when they smell this, I don't think they're going to like it. But damn, does it smell amazing. I like this a lot, a lot. This is so artistic. Very, very unique. Very woody and green and smoky and warm. There's something warm and creamy in this scent. There is a lot of, of this is just, I really, really like this fragrance so far. This is my favorite. Wow, mist. Let me show you guys my screen so you can see what's in this fragrance directly from the brand themselves. So this is Carrot Seeds, Tuberose Absolute, Jasmine Sambach, Osmanthus. This brother loves him some Osmanthus. We also have Rose Oris Butter. He likes Oris Butter also. Sandalwood. <laughs> this is the third fragrance in a row with Musk Complex. This also has Patchouli, and this is also the third fragrance with Ambergris. So I'm noticing a theme. He likes ambergris, he likes musk, he likes rose, he likes orris. He likes jasmine. Well, oh, no, jasmine wasn't in the other. Wow, I really, really dig this one, guys. This is like a scent that I would love to buy and own. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. There we go. Yeah, this is sick. I would buy this. And when you want to purchase, let me just see the price point. The price point of this brand, 50 mils, 250. Okay. They're definitely not cheap. I have to say, though, this definitely smells like a fragrance I would expect to be in that world of perfume price points. Like, I would expect, based on the way these smell, I would expect that price point. Wow, I really like Mist. Mist is major. <laughs> Mist is major. It's it's a very masculine leaning fragrance. Um Yeah, I like this. I really like this. I haven't smelled any There's there's a lot of fragrance with I've smelled the notes of that scent. I've smelled the fragrances. I've smelled fragrances with the ingredients that mist has in it, but I've never smelled anything like mist. Mist is uh, <laughs> very, very, very indie, very, very niche. Not a brand that I would imagine a focus group would say yes to, but definitely a brand that a fragrance lover would definitely understand and appreciate. Um, the next fragrance is called Jupiter. My favorite planet outside of the uh, outside of Earth. Uh, <laughs> growing up, when I was a kid, when I was a little man, I used to love, 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 love space. Space was, you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, like space. I was sucker. I was a sucker for space. Take me to a. I used to love telescopes. I used to love to look at the sky constellations. I was all into space. Space is still one of the most fascinating things in my world, you know, I just, anything space is my thing, you know, um, Jupiter. <laughs> is this fragrance otherworldly though? Oh, this is a freshie though. Oh, this is a really cool freshie too. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Henley. Oh, this is interesting. Let's go. Let me show you my screen. <laughs> so this fragrance, golden apple, pale blue dot, summer swallowed us whole. That's the that's the uh, the story behind the scent. 
I could definitely see this. I love the word summer used in this context because this is definitely a summer forward scent. A refreshing citrus perfume to be used with joyous abandon. So clearly he wants you to overspray the hell out of this. This fragrance, bergamot, red mandarin, neroli, cedarwood oil, vanilla bean tincture. That is so interesting. Again, we have musk and ambergris, which we found in all four scents so far. This is a sick citrus, guys. Complex, slightly soapy, very woody. Oh yeah, that's, that's really nice. The neroli in this fragrance is beautiful also. I don't get Fruit Loops from this scent. I don't know, guys. Like, sometimes when I smell Neroli, I get a heavy, heavy dose of Fruit Loops. <laughs> but not from this one. Ooh. I wonder why he would name a fragrance that is inspired by citrus. That's, I wonder why he would name a fresh citrus scent Jupiter. That's interesting. Damn, that's good. That's good. That's good. Now, would I buy that? Depends on a couple of things, but whew, that's, that sounds like, that. it smells like something I would own. I'm going to just put it to y'all like that. <laughs> um, the next fragrance is called Untitled. And Untitled, man, I love this, guys. I love, I love this. Like, Smelling fragrances with you all for the first time. Never smelled them before, but doing it live. Whoa, I really enjoy this, guys. I really, really enjoy this. Oh, damn. This smells like grass. Like, this is very vetiver forward. Um, I know that for a fact. Untitled. Let's see. So, Untitled. Ooh, this is a good scent, though. Ooh, this is amazing, Vetiver, guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so intentional fallacy, counterfactional def definitiveness. What? Definiteness, excuse me. Counterfactual definiteness. If a tree falls. What? <laughs> Go off, Henley. I really, no, I kind of, I really, really like the the verbiage. I'm into the copy. That's, that's pretty cool. What is the difference between what something is and how it appears? Why are you asking me, though? Like, that's, like, this, this is interesting. Okay, so the notes, as I thought, vetiver, it's so vetiver heavy. Iris, sandalwood, and musk. This is a sick vetiver fragrance. When I first smelled it, I almost thought barbecue sauce. Like it almost smelled like that kind of thick, heavy, thick vetiver, you know? Sometimes vetiver can smell smoky when it's very, very concentrated. And when I first smelled this, it was given that vibe of like something burning, you know? But it is calmed down majorly. This is very nice, Vetiver. It's not an overly fresh one. I don't get tons of citrus, which is why I like it also. This is a very, this is like not an on-the-nose fragrance that you can wear in the summer, but you could wear this in the summer. I think this, I think this honestly is a four out of four season fragrance. Oh, yeah. Um, Henley is absolutely impressing me, um, <laughs> which is crazy because, like, I'm just, I feel like I'm blessed. I feel like I'm lucky. Like, I stumbled on Savoir Fair and now Henley, thanks to a couple of people that I know. And I'm so grateful that they put me on because I am into this. I'm into this. this. The experience of smelling these are, is just really, really insane to me. The next fragrance, guys, is called Rosenthal. Rosenthal, really? Like, what, what the hell? <laughs> the names are cool. Um, Rosenthal, let me show you guys. 
Rosenthal is, let's see, Flower Child, Color of Love, Clinging to a Scheme. Interesting copy, guys. Rebellion within a traditional theme, Rose and Sandalwood, Thrown Askew by Patchouli and Incense. Damn, this is nice, too. Incense, Rose, Iris, Juniper, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Angelica. The first fragrance so far out of the six that we've smelled that doesn't have musk or ambergris. And by the way, I got to tell you guys, the musk and the ambergris in these fragrances do not come across like stinky. They don't come across like, like dirty at all. It, for me, based on what I've smelled, it adds like more character, more dimension to the fragrance, um, more depth. But I don't get like dirty from any of them. So Rosenthal is a very interesting take on a patchouli fragrance. Patchouli fragrance, I mean, patchouli rose and sandalwood with, with um, yeah, patchouli rose and sandalwood and incense. It's, it's great. <laughs> Rosenthal is great also. Out of what I've smelled, this is also a very, very niche experience. I don't know if I would buy this, um, not because I don't like it, not because it's not good. I don't know if I would buy it because... The brand is expensive and I would probably prioritize others first, but this could be a scent that I would love too. I would love to wear this. Damn, these are all really, really good. Rosenthal, it, it does, damn, this can, this is also a very rosy experience. But it doesn't smell like your typical rose fragrances it doesn't smell it doesn't smell like it's trying to be another thing which i also like a lot of rose fragrances in my opinion smell like other rose fragrances everything is starting to smell the same in this world of perfume now um so yeah that's a very very beautiful take on rose that's again not on the nose rose it's not like you know like it's not like a freshly plucked rose it's like a rose with art you know, it's an artistic experience of rose. It doesn't come across photorealistic in terms of like an environment. You know, it's more of like um, a perfume with rose as a highlight, but definitely a very interesting, very unique composition. Um, not what you'll smell typically, I'll say. Um, the next fragrance from the House of Henley is a scent called Fume. 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 It's a Brooklyn brand. There's no reason to give it an accent. <laughs> Fume. Um, this brand is, I'm really excited about this fragrance because I love a smoky fragrance. Tyrannosaurus Rex, if you guys know my channel, you know I love Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, Mad Long Graphite. I'm into these dark, weirdo, like, you know, ashy, smoky fragrances. There's a fragrance called Rose, Rose, and Rose Queer by Frederick Mall. One of my favorite rose fragrances in the world. It's like ashy roses. It's like imagine, imagine um, a funeral for roses. Like it was just like cremated. Imagine like roses that were cremated. <laughs> That's like what rose and queer smells like. It's almost. It actually reminds me of like imagine like clay. Like imagine mud and clay. Like a like a very exotic like uh, clay. You know, something that would make your skin soft, like a really interesting clay, right? Mixed with rose. That's what it smells like. It's next level. Um, I'm going to be talking about that as the, sum, as the fall and winter comes through. Fume. Fume, like I expected, guys. Very smoky. I could easily see this being done by a... This, this smells like something Comme de Garçon would do. This smells like something Matt Elon would do. This smells like something Henley would do. <laughs> Based on what I've smelled so far, nothing smells typical. Nothing is expected. Not one of these fragrances are what I would expect a fragrance to smell like. I know that sounds weird. Um, 
they're just not basic. They're just not like reproducing something we've already smelled multiple, multiple times. This is definitely on the niche side of the tracks and I'm so for it. This is sick. Really beautiful. Definitely a scent that's in my world of scent. Um, it's a scent that I would absolutely like. I'm not sure if a lot of people would be into it because, again, it's a very, very dark, smoky fragrance. This fragrance is, um, let's, read the, let's read the copy. It's always entertaining. Evergreen fueled forest floor through smoke. Okay. <laughs> Wafts of burnt coniferous woods contra contrasted with fertile soil and sap smeared leather. And the ingredients, conifer resins, so distinct green resinous smoked tea. I'm so fan, I'm such a fan, guys. Galbanum, ruckus. What the hell is ruckus? <laughs> Nagramatha, Nagramatha and oak moss. Oh, gosh. Smoky ingredients. I don't know what ruckus is, but I know nagamatha is smoky. Smoked tea, resinous. Resins are smoky. Um, galbanum, depending on the concentration, can come across smoky, but also very green. I'm, a, I'm, I'm into this. This is great. Fume, beautiful. Wow. Fume. Fume. Sorry. I see I tend to make things... <laughs> I tend to do the whole, I tend to do the whole accent thing, even when it's not called for sometimes. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. <laughs> um, the next fragrance we're talking about um, is from, uh, it's called Bourbon. This is the fragrance that I'm, well, no, let's go with Hune. I want to save Bourbon for last because, you know, I love a boozy fragrance. So I want to save that for last. The fragrance, the next to last scent is called Hune. 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 Okay, so there are two fragrances from this that we have that I haven't smelled that I really wanted to try. One was called Moan, and the other we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, this is called Hune, and let's see what Hune is doing. Oh, okay. Wow. This is smoky too. Hmm. Oh yeah, the other fragrances, the other fragrance I wanted to try was cola. So I wanted to try Moan and Cola. Let me show you guys what it looks like. This is what I was hoping to have in the sample pack. These two right here, which are sold out. I did get this one though, the Bourbon Extray. But these two, Cola and Moan, are not in my sample pack. And I'm a little bit disappointed. I heard good things about Cola. Anyway, this fragrance, Hune. Let's see what's doing. This is another smoky green fragrance. New world, old growth, old growth, chiseled forms. Ruckus, another fragrance with ruckus in it. <laughs> um, Oris root, beeswax, sandalwood, cedar moss, cedar moss, oak wood, and musk. A very rooty experience. I, I'm, I'm actually impressed as well with this too. Wow. I think if I were to choose, yeah, wow. And they all change. Okay, Hewn. All right, that's Hewn, guys. Um, really, really good scent. Very, 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 very on point. Um, I, there's just one last one. And then I want to go back and see which one I prefer because I want to spray a couple of on skin. Um, and last but not least, Bourbon Extray. Bourbon Extray, guys, I love the scent of bourbon. It's one of my favorite, favorite drinks. Um, I'm not really an alcoholic drinker, but I love a bourbon. I love scotch. I like dark liquors um, that are spicy and, you know, I like that type of vibe. But anyway, um, Bourbon Extray. Let's look at the notes, guys. It says, uh, dusty pages, angels share. Ooh. <laughs> ha! 
Now, you guys know what an angel share is, right? Just to let you know, just coming back, um, angel share is basically like when you take a whiskey barrel and you open the top of the barrel, it's like the, the, the evaporated experience on the top of the barrel, that's the angel share, uh, from what I understand. I might be wrong. If I am wrong, correct me. Um, <laughs> but angel share is basically like the woody, oaky experience within a cask of liquor um, or a barrel of liquor. Think like barrel. <laughs> Um, so let's get back to it. So this fragrance, an oak aged pre prohibition blend of vintage accords and house made tinctures, bergamot, orange zest, toasted oak, cognac oil, bourbon, vanilla, benzoin, tonka bean, labdanum, guyac wood, castorium, oak moss, and musks. Guys, this fragrance right here has ingredients that just makes me salivate. Like, I'm drooling right now, you know, seriously. Um, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I had to wipe that because, uh, like, I literally, literally am excited to try this fragrance. So um, everything in there sounds really, really cool. Um, let's go. Ooh, I am really excited about this. Ooh, is my expectations met with this fragrance? Bourbon X-Ray, guys. Oh man. Oh, that's really, really beautiful. This is a beautiful woody experience, a beautiful woody experience. I get a booziness, but it's not like overt. It's not like a Wow, this is really nice. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. Dark, earthy. Definitely leaning masculine, but women can wear it. It's dirty. There is definitely castorium in this. It's not like a, it's not funky, filthy, but it's dirty. It is definitely castorium in this. I wonder if it's authentic castorium. I wonder if it's that or an accord to make you think castorium. Because if this is really castorium, my goodness. Oh, I really like this. This is so freaking niche. Oh my God. This fragrance right here gives me faith in perfumery. Like scents like this, brands like this, Give me faith in perfumery. You know, it goes to show you guys, there are some amazing fragrance houses in the world of perfume, and very few of us will know about them because we're so focused on the same old, same old. We're focused on what everyone knows and loves already, you know? And it's so interesting to just take time out and just explore brands that offer fragrances and, and offer a, um, a, a an experience for perfume that's not expected, not same old, same old, not been there, done that. This is sick. Now, the funny thing is, there is I, I listed tonka bean, vanilla, um, orange, zest, bergamot. There is nothing sweet and pretty about bourbon extray. This is beautiful, though. <laughs> This is so beautiful, but this is not pretty. If you're a person that wants to smell pretty, you're not going to like this scent. Nothing pretty about it. This fragrance is elegant. This fragrance is, oh, where would I wear this? I would wear this anywhere. <laughs> I would wear this everywhere, and it would never be appropriate for most places I would wear it. That's the funny thing. Yeah, this is... This is a fragrance I would wear to impress myself. <laughs> this is a fragrance that I would wear to just be like, oh my God, that's so good. That's like, this is that impressive, that well made. Damn. 
This is probably my favorite fragrance from the collection so far. It is freaking amazing. Wow, 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 wow. This is special, guys. Bourbon Extra, a special perfume. I'm so disappointed that there's no more. <laughs> there's no more. Every bottle is sold out. 50 mil, 30 mil, 15 mil. Even the, even if you wanted to buy a sample spray of this fragrance, it is sold out. Look at this, guys. Every one of them are sold out. That's not right. Why would I want something? I can't get it. <laughs> like, honestly, guys, I would buy this right now. The 30 mil for this fragrance is $160. That's definitely more doable than $250 for a 50 mil. But I have to say, I would buy the 50 mil. I would buy the 50. I would buy either one, 30 or the 50. I would buy whichever is available. Please get on. Uh, please get available soon because, like, I want this. I'm just hoping it works on my skin. Oh, man. Okay, I'm spraying this. I'm going to spray this. This is the one, guys. This is the one. This is the one that I was hoping for. You ever smell a, you ever want to smell a fragrance so bad, and then when you get it, you get your nose on it, and you're like, ah, womp, womp, womp. You know, no. I am not getting that from this. I was hoping that I would love this. The name itself is interesting and awesome to me. I was hoping I would love this. And I have to say, I love this. <laughs> but I hope I love it on me. That's the, that's the rub. Oh, that is so special, guys. It smells, it smells like Wow. On me, I'm getting a lot of green, green experiences. I'm definitely getting the citrus also. But the citrus in this fragrance isn't sweet. The citrus in this fragrance isn't on the nose. It's just like adding character um, to the fragrance. So it's not as expected. Damn, that is really, really, really nice. <laughs> wow. I got to tell you, though, guys, it's dirty, slightly dirty, slightly. It's very woody. It's very resinous. It's very green. It's not, I shouldn't say very dirty. It's like a hint of dirt. It's like a hint of funk. It's like, it's like a little bit. <laughs> It's a little bit, you know, it's there. It's, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little, it's, it's, it's not poo, but it's pooey, you know? <laughs> oh no. In a good way. I, I gotta, I gotta preface it in a really, 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 really good way. I, I really love it. I really, I don't have anything in my collection that's like it. So at this point in my vibes and at this point in my collection journey and my stage and fragrance and, and at this stage in my fragrance journey, um, I'm always about adding things that do not, that I don't own. I'm always into finding things that make my collection better, more impressive. And this, I think, would be one of those additions that would make my collection even more interesting and more impressive that's that's really really beautiful wow <laughs> my expectations were met guys which is not that's not that doesn't happen a lot it really 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 doesn't happen a lot oh my god jason absolutely it's getting a lady and i'm Oh my God. No, there's, there is clown balls. There is not one womp womp in this, in this collection of perfume. Like I, I've not smelled, do not, I haven't smelled one fragrance that I would consider 
a crap scent. I would not, well, not even a crap scent, but an unimpressive fragrance. Every fragrance is impressive. And when you consider this man so, so taught himself how to make fragrance, this is the type of brand that will inspire each and every one of us to go out and buy fragrance ingredients and start mixing our own stuff. Like, that's how impressive this line is. This line will inspire you to follow that similar path and buy some stuff and mix some stuff and see what you can come up with, you know? Um, honestly, I'm, I gotta tell you guys, I'm closer and closer. I'm going, I'm going closer to that world. I'm going, I'm going in that direction because, man, I would love to mix some stuff up, you know what I mean? And see how it goes. But let's get into this line. Let's go back. Let's recap. I want to go back to the first ones I smelled and see how they have dried down on paper because if I like them, I'm going to try those too. So the first scent we tried was called Amora. Still fruity, still dark, juicy fragrance. Really good. If you're a woman and you want to smell fruity without smelling like a stand, like a fruit basket, if you want to smell fruity without smelling like Kirke or Herba Pura, the same old, same old, you got to try Amora. Men, if you want to smell fruity, but not fruity, if you want to smell fruity, that's horrible to say out loud because that was completely... <laughs> If you want to smell fruity, but you don't want to smell like, like a pretty fruit basket, how about that? This is definitely a fragrance you would like. I, as a man, I think a man could easily wear this. It's definitely on the. It's definitely leaning in the feminine world, but a, but it definitely has a foot in the unisex masculine world also. So. I think anyone could wear this. Amora smells great. It's drying down beautifully. God, I need to put that on skin, but I don't have nine arms. <laughs> the next fragrance that we tried was called Blonde. By the way, I got to tell you guys, um, Amora, for a fresh, fruity smell, it's sticking to paper very well. So, okay, um, the next one is Blonde. Blonde is nice. I don't know if I would prioritize it in this collection, and I don't even know who this fragrance speaks to. Like, I don't know who would wear this. It's very unique, very, very fascinatingly interesting. It's an interesting fragrance. Definitely not an easy breezy scent. Very, very interesting, very unique, very beautiful. But I don't know if I would prioritize it. I would actually buy the whole collection. I gotta tell you guys, there's like the whole damn thing. Like it's so annoying that I like everything sometimes, but it's not my fault. It's just these brands are doing really well. It's not me, it's these brands. Like. It's not me. I have really good taste and my standards are high. You know, I don't I don't like everything, but these brands make me feel like I like everything and it's so weird, which also makes me feel good. You know, I'm like, yes, finally, you know, I'm proud of that. Okay. <laughs> Mist. Ooh, Mist is interesting. What's going on, Oscar? Thank you so much for coming through, bro. Ooh, this mist is good. It kind of reminds me of a fragrance from Strange Love. Um, they have like a chocolatey oud scent. And that's what mist reminds me of, like a, a chocolatey oud. I don't even, there's no oud in this fragrance from what I read. I don't remember reading oud in there. But um, it has that vibe, you know? Oh, this is great, guys. It's the ambergris in there that's making it that way. And the musk, you're really smelling that as it dries down. The mist is sick. Mist is sick, guys. 
easily I would buy Mist. Easily I would easily buy that fragrance. Okay, Mist is a, a definite, definite buy from me. Um, I might have to definitely hold that down. Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter smells good, guys. A very, very interesting scent. It's on the lighter side. I wish it was a little bit more intense. But I really like the way this smells. I wish it were more intense, but I feel like it's a very, very unique take on a citrus scent, which I love. This doesn't smell like every citrus fragrance in the world of perfume, which is hard to do. It's really, it's really hard to make a citrus forward fragrance unique and interesting. This is that. I would buy this too. Go ahead, Jupiter. I'm putting the fragrances that I would own to the side because I need to make a note of it. <laughs> um, and the next one was called Untitled. Oh, that's good too. It's not screaming off the paper, so I would imagine this is a light scent also. But I really love this. Ju ju um, I really, really love this vetiver. This is amazing. I really, really love the vetiver in this. Oh, Untitled, not Jupiter. Excuse me, guys. This is called Untitled. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Uh, the next one is called Rosenthal. I would buy this too. It's a really, really good rose scent. It's a beautiful rose fragrance. That's why he calls it Rosenthal. Duh. Like, I literally just thought of it and it made sense. It clicked in the brain, you know, it was clicking around. I'm like, what is this? What is, why does he? Boom. There we go. Rosenthal is an amazingly beautiful dark rose fragrance. A rose that I would easily buy. That's freaking awesome. Wow. Okay, I gotta try this. Damn, Bourbon Extray, guys. It's a freaking 10 out of 10. Wow. Very Castorium forward, guys. If you're if you're into like these dark stink, not stinky, because this is not stinky, but it's dirty though. It's dirty. Oh, damn! I want I want this so bad. I want this so bad. I don't have anything that's like it. And yeah, I gotta own it. I got to own it. Rosenthal is beautiful, guys. Rosenthal is great. Um, great. Absolutely great. Um, <laughs> the next one, Fume. Fume. I was hoping to like this more. The smoky craziness has really died down. This fragrance almost feels like the lightest scent that we've tried. Well, that I sprayed so far. Yeah, I barely smell fume, which I'm shocked by. I like it, though. But it's hiding on paper, and it shouldn't. So that's not my favorite sign. But I, I really dig the scent. The scent smells beautiful. And it's not as smoky as it was before when I first sprayed it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. Uh, the next one we tried was called Hune. Hune is very savory. Very savory. I almost want to bite this. This is freaking good too. Wow. Hune. Okay, David, I got to tell you, Dave, you were right. I am, I'm absolutely blown away. This brand did justice. Amazing. And bourbon, which is 
right here. I'm hoping this fragrance uh, stays on my skin. So far, so good. Right now, I notice it. It is not light. This is sick. I think uh, bourbon is going to be that fragrance out of the collection I buy first. Um, I think there's a couple that I want. There's not, there's not, I don't think, I know. There's a couple that I'm buying for sure. Um, I might, I'm probably getting bourbon for sure, for sure. And options that I might consider, Rosenthal, because I love a rose fragrance that's not like a typical rose fragrance. I'm digging Mist because it's like a really interesting, almost aquatic leaning fragrance. That's not like an op. It's, it's, it's almost aquatic, but not what you would expect an aquatic to do. Jupiter smells amazing. <laughs> and, um, and Untitled. Very green. Beautiful. I mean, yeah. So I honestly love five out of the nine samples that I love love nine five out of the nine fragrances that was sent to me and i'll let you know by my ranking my favorite fragrance from what i've smelled so far based on how they smell on paper of course this is i would you definitely need to try fragrances on skin it's really really crazy to judge a perfume based on what it smells like on paper because your skin is the missing ingredient but based on how they just smell right bourbon is bourbon is Bourbon is special. Bourbon is like a hidden gem. It is a 10 out of 10 dark, woody, animalic, boozy fragrance that doesn't come across too vanilla-y at all. That doesn't come across even that boozy. The booziness of this fragrance, it almost feels like boozed soaked wood, soaked wood, as opposed to actual liquor in a bottle. It's literally like the cask the top of the whiskey barrel as opposed to what's in the barrel. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Excuse my language. <laughs> like, oh my God. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't, you know, that just came out, you know? It is what it is. It just came out. I just cannot, I mean, I'm just like, I'm really, 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 really impressed with this collection of fragrances. They're all very well done. You guys, I would suggest getting the sample pack and exploring and seeing what you love. I think there's something in this collection for everyone, whether you're, but you really have to appreciate niche perfumery. You really have to appreciate perfume that's not trying to be what it's expected to be. These are fragrances that are more artistic than having you smell nice. These are fragrances that are gonna have you smelling interesting, not good per se. But you do smell amazing, you just don't smell like nice, you know? I would rather smell, like I mentioned to you all before, I would rather smell horrible to you than nice to you. Because you forget nice, you don't forget horrible. I'd rather be not forgettable than forgotten um, when it comes to my scent, you know? Um, of course, there's a time and place for everything, but you know. So yeah, my top one is Bourbon Extra. Bourbon Extra is sold out. There's a reason for it. I'm going to be honest with you. I wish I tried Cola and Moan, but they were not in my sample pack. I might have to get them when they become more available, when they're not sold out. Rosenthal is probably my number two favorite. That's a sick rose, guys. That's a sick rose rose wow it's rosy but i don't smell petals like that it's like a rose bush <laughs> damn go off henley why where have you been bro like why no why is no one talking about you like that yeah um rose um rosenthal is my number two my number three is mist I really like mist. Um, number four, Jupiter smells good. It's just going, it's getting a little light. As well as untitled. I really need to see how those two live on skin before I go forward, but they smell amazing. I just want to know if they work on my actual skin. 
But in terms of how they smell, oh, wow. An incredible brand, in my opinion, based on what I just smelled. Absolutely worthy of the lady. Let's go. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely impressed. The Henley brand gets two thumbs up, two, two thumbs up all day. I mean, this is a really, really exciting brand that I think um, I'm really curious to find out what new sense they're doing. I'm, on, I'm almost a little bit disappointed. I'm saddened at the fact that this brand has been around for nine years and they've never been like focused on in the fragrance community. YouTubers, Instagrammers, people who love perfume was not able to find this brand. And I don't know if it's the brand's fault, if it's the YouTuber's fault, if it's our fault as influencers, we're not doing what we need to do to expose these lines. I really, really, really don't know what it is. But the fact that this brand is so slept on but yet creates quality like this really makes me a little bit sad, you know? I'm almost grateful, I'm glad, I'm almost, I think it's almost a, a feat that this brand is still doing work. They've been around for nine years. I'm just so grateful and glad that they're still in business. I'm still, I'm grateful and glad that they are not discontinuing any of these. I hope they're not. Um, but, this is this is what it makes me sad when 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 a, when you can go. It makes me sad when you can go to a. Let me just give you guys a little. Let me show you something. Um, it makes me sad when you can go to a website. <sighs> and you type perfume. And you sort by like top seller let me show you something guys this really annoys me when brands like this exist it really saddens me that when you go to a website let me show you like Saks Fifth Avenue for instance when you go to a Saks Fifth Avenue and you t sort their options by the best sellers let me show you something I've, I did this weeks and weeks and weeks ago but I want you to see this guys Look at this. Look at the top three top sellers at Saks. Saks, top three fragrances, Maison Francis Curjean's Baccarat Rouge by 40. One, two, and three. The top three selling fragrances in all of Saks are one fragrance, it's one name, one fragrance from one brand. Again, look at the fourth seller. Look at the fourth top seller, Lalabo. Santal 33. Look at the next one. Creed's Aventus, Delina, Miss Dior, Sauvage. These are up oh, Kirke, another 13. That shocked me. Fluna Kartik from Ex Nihilo. That shocked me that they're in the top selling, um, the top 20. Um, that's impressive for Ex Nihilo. Go off Ex Nihilo. Um, look at Kirke, killing it at Saks. Um, the Herba Pura alternative. Um, but again, look, Dior, like, I don't even say this brand's name. I don't know what this brand is. Who's that? <laughs> I don't see you. Um, that brand, um, Portrait of a Lady. Wow, that's impressive for Saks to be a top seller. Um, that's a very, very, very elegant. Look at this, guys. But look, even their three part even their three piece travel set is in the top selling fragrances and look a body cream from baccarat is is in the top selling fragrances it's insane it's insane so and again look ombre leather sauvage you know the same old same old so when you see when you when i see brands like henley you know coming around doing absolutely amazing artistic work from a person who literally taught himself what brands like this need a lot more love and i'm definitely here for the love i'm giving it all the love it's it's 
It's earned it. You know, Henley is sick. Get your nose on these brands, guys. Focus your attention on these brands because honestly, do it before, like, support these brands because these brands deserve it. They really, really do. They really, really, really do. They, they not only deserve your support, um, they deserve your business. They're making fragrances that are special. And these indie, these indie niche brands, that's, they just need to be exposed. They need someone to expose them. So that's why I exposed this brand today. Henley Perfumes, I'm so grateful. Thank you again, David, for putting me onto this line. I wanted to share my screen with you all, and I know strange love pricing. <laughs> um, let's see what some of you have been saying. Thank you so much for checking out this video, guys. Gearness is great. Um, a good bang for the buck, for sure. Gearness is definitely a great bang for your buck fragrance line. Um, let's see. He was good, bro. Made it in for this week. Thank you so much again, Papa. Um, Grab the sample set of Savoir Fair. That's some good juice. Thank you so much, Catch My Whiff, for, um, for co-signing what I've been saying about that collection of fragrance. Savoir Fair is so good, man. What is your favorite scent from them? Um, I'm really curious. I love that Whiskey Rose. That, that was oof, sick, sick, sick. Um, and again, $20 for the Savoir Fair sample set. It's literally like a giveaway. Uh, now you're getting me triggered to try these. <laughs> My bad, bro, bro. But, you know, I wanted to put you onto something worthy of your time. Ah, Panda Fragrance. You know about cola. I have cola from them, and it's great, but it's so expensive. Yeah, like two fifty for a 50 mil. 164 30 mil. I'm one of those people though. I don't really focus on the amount of juice. I only focus on the price because to me, a 30 mil for 160 is still a, a good price. Like for instance, um, it's still accessible to me. Like I could still have that juice, 30 mils for that price point. Under $200 for a fragrance, I would say under $200 for any of these fragrances is a really, really, really fair price in my opinion. Um, all of these fragrances are well done, artistic, small batches, you know, indie brand. Like for these fragrances to be under $200, even at a 30 mil price point is really, really impressive to me. Um, really impressive to me. Like he could do House of Matriarch price points and literally he, had, he would have a leg to stand on uh, and he's not going there. So I really appreciate the price point for what you're getting. For these fragrances are easily worth 160 for 30 mil. Easily, easily, easily. If anything, I would say they're a good value for what you're getting. <laughs> easily. Like this fragrance for 160, to be able to access this fragrance, to have a 30 mil of this fragrance, Bourbon X-ray, for, for $160, I would expect to spend at least 250. I would, expend, I would expect the 30 mil to be 250, not 160 for this smell. This is, this is, this is a bargain. It's a bargain. It's a bargain. But I do understand what you mean. Like $250 for a 50 mil is not cheap. You know, it's not. But it's worth to budget for it. If you like the fragrances from the collection, I would say that this brand is worth budgeting to own. You know, I would sell a couple of whack bottles if I if it were really if it really came down to it, I would sell a couple of bottles I don't like to inch closer to the price point where I could purchase that without it being a pain. But that's just me. Cola sounds interesting. Oh yes, clown balls, it surely does. I really, really wish. Jupiter, Florida, maybe? Booker's Rebirth. Bro, I'm curious. Maybe. I don't know. Jupiter, Florida? I, that would be, you know, no, I, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that he named Jupiter after Florida or after the city of Florida. The guy's from Brooklyn. I don't, I don't see it. Um, <laughs> the brand is from Brooklyn, so I don't, I don't know. I think Jupiter probably, I don't know what Jupiter refers to. I need to, got, I get, I need to get Hans Henley on the live so we can talk these things out. Uh, so far, the notes of every fragrance I'm into. Thank you, Catch My Whiff. That's what I was like, whoa. Like, David told me, like, bro, you need to check out that line. Like, every one of them are impressively beautiful. And I was like, really? Like, let's see. And when I got them, now that I'm smelling them, I'm like, yeah. 
Veneva is one of my jams, of course. Um, you bought the Discovery set. Nice stuff, bro. Thank you so much. I think you're going to really appreciate them. I thank you for supporting that brand because I, I'm not making no money off of them, you know, getting your sample pack, but I am really, really grateful that you trust me enough to go forward. And um, thank you for that. That a really, really, that's high praise. That's really high praise. Um, yeah, I know, right? I need that 50 mil discovery set. I know every fragrance. I like, it, honestly, I would buy five. I would buy five. I probably would buy more than that, but I would buy five right now. You know, like five of these fragrances would easily fit in my collection and make it better. Easily. And again, those five, Untitled, Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. Wow. I smell oh, Jupiter. Jupiter is reminding me of something. I can't put my finger on it. Mm. But I like Jupiter a lot. Mist. Jupiter, by the way, is probably the most easy breezy out of the five that I'm focused on. It's probably the most easy to like. <laughs> Mist. Mist is kind of reminding me a little bit of like a basement. A little bit of like asbestos mold. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea what asbestos smelled like. You wouldn't know me if I knew what asbestos smelled like. But <laughs> it's industrial, and that's what I love about it. I'm really digging mist. It's something about it that just, it's, it's interesting and comforting all at the same time. I'm really into mist. I'm really into this. I really, really like this line. And of course, Rosenthal. I just hope Rosenthal can last on skin, but it's, it's impressive, all of them. And of course, bourbon. Bourbon extray is just, this, it's special. It's so freaking good. Um, Sabrina, I hope you're good, Sabrina. Um, fume might be a bit more than I can handle, but I'll definitely give it a try. I, hey, it might be. Um, I was expecting to love fume. I have to be honest with you. Uh, well, wait a minute. It's drying down. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. I would probably buy fume too. <laughs> I gotta just try them on skin, guys. It's like it's hard to just. But I wanted to do like a quick overview, and um, at some point, oof. At some point, I'm gonna. I just sprayed fume on my skin, and it's uber green i remember when in the in a in a um verbiage it's like in a copy it's like you know a forest on fire definitely a green smoky smell but, but i like it i like it it smells like burning leaves it's my thing i'm 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 just into weird i love fragrance ruckus is wild vetiver huh thank you clown balls See, I knew. See, my, my audience, guys, like, you guys are, like, some of the most brilliant people, honestly. The fact that you knew that, bro, go off. Anyway, I'm liking Fume, too. I'm, I might get Fume, too. <laughs> so I'm going to be broke, literally about, uh, yeah, I'm going to be broke. I'm, I'm literally going to go broke on this brand. Damn, that is nice. Fume is smelling good on my skin, guys. Micah, catching late. So sorry, but thank you so much for coming through, Micah. Um, just looked up Ruckus, and it's a style of better of a root part of the plant. Okay, thank you so much. Catch my whiff. Wow, really, really good. And decent Celia. I finally figured out how to pronounce it. <laughs> and decent Celia. I'm like, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I can read, I promise, but you know. Um, bourbon gets the lady, yes. This whole house gets the lady. Henley gets the lady. There's no, there's nothing want want in any of them. 
Um, nothing want want. Nothing basic. Nothing easy. Everything is special. No want wamps here. Absolutely not. Oscar, what's up, E? What's going on, Oscar? So, Micah, the house is called Henley Perfumes. I should collaborate with the maker. I really should. They should let. They should. Um, they should make a fragrance with my name behind it, right? That'd be hilarious. That would be actually. That, that would actually be a. Um, that would be cool, actually. <laughs> Oh, no. Jason, what's going on, Jay? Thank you so much for coming through. Fruity scents are really, really hard to pull off unless it has cologne. I get you. But Amora is nice. This is the fruity one in the collection of fragrances from this house. This is one I think women would easily appreciate, not because it's just like, you know, it's just a beautiful fragrance that I think would appeal to a lot of women. And I think a lot of men would love it also. I would wear this. I just, am, I just, there's just so many fragrances from this brand that I like, so I probably won't prioritize it. But if, let's say, I got all of the ones that I love, I could see myself buying this because there's nothing in my collection that smells like it. I don't own this fragrance outside of this house. So that's why I would, I would consider it. And a man could easily wear it. So I don't feel like I'm like compromising my masculinity to put it on my skin. But yes, you are right, Micah. Strange love pricing, it's a little up there. But I got to tell you, the reason why is because they're very, very, very well made. They're using very expensive ingredients. So I do get the price point. And also, they're trying to be exclusive. They're not trying to get... Their fragrances are not... They're not building their brand to be everywhere. They just want a few people who know to, to get them and... In that case, yeah, it's on point. I love a rose fragrance that smells like the light, like the petal and not just the strong center of the flower. I get you. I personally love a rose that smells like the petal, the stem, the soil, the woodiness of the branches. I love, I love an entire picture of rose, not just the petal. To me, the petal area of the rose is, you know, it's a, an aspect, it's the most attractive part of the flower, but if it wasn't for the soil, if it wasn't for the stem, if it wasn't for the, that rose would never exist. So I love the entire, I love the total picture of rose, not just the petals. I find petals just make me smell like air freshener. Is it bad that I'm kind of glad there's no, there's not hundreds of people on here to learn about this? <laughs> Yes, it is bad, Bertoesco, because there needs to be hundreds of people in this chat looking at this, learning from this, you know. But, you know, I notice live videos compared to like my like recorded videos. My live videos are not doing like what my recorded videos did. And to be honest with you, I don't really care because I'm doing this because I love doing it, not because I'm like trying to grow and trying to like my that energy is kind of beyond me. I'm like at this point, I just want to like offer something to an to the audience that knows like if you know you know if you don't you don't and it doesn't matter to me if this if this channel gets to like a hundred thousand subscribers i really could care less if i had a hundred people and 40 or 10 people came if i only had a hundred subscribers and 10 people were in my lives i would be doing my lives still you know uh it doesn't matter but yeah, it's a little bit, more people should be checking it out. But I think a lot of people don't even know I'm still doing, like a lot of people don't even know that I'm back on YouTube. You know, it is it is what it is. And of course, I'm not talking about the most popular subject. So of course, people don't really know because I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about what you are searching for. I'm talking about things you don't know about mostly. So it makes sense that I'm not going to be stumbled on for the most part. But that's unfortunate. It is what it is. You're my audience. Help me. <laughs> Share these videos. Let people know that I exist and I'm doing this still. Um, but yeah, you're right, brother. I, it is, it is kind of bad. You, yeah, it is bad that, uh, that you're glad that not a lot of people are on here. <laughs> but I totally get you, my man. If I were you, I'd, be, I'd feel the same way. Um, indie houses have a massive mountain to climb to get any attention with so many conglomerates controlling the center world. Absolutely. But there are ways to get, there are ways, you know, House of Matriarch made a nice little 
entry. Um, there are brands that can, there are ways to do it. You know, Nishan did it, you know. Um, uh, but you're right. It, you need the right distributor behind you these days. If you have the right distributor, your fragrances, your fragrances can do amazingly well. Um, Rogue Perfumery, House of Matriarch, Gather Perfumes, TSVGA Perfumes, and Motif Olfactive are indie brands that I've been checking out some for a while. Happy to add Henley to the list. I really mess with Rogue. I really dig Rogue. House of Matriarch, I own about four fragrances. Love, love Michelle's work. Um, Christy, Michelle. Um, love, I'd never heard of Gather Perfume, so you're putting me on Catch My Whiff. I might check that out. TSVGA, not into that, not, not even aware of that, so definitely going to check that out. And Motif Olfactive, I know that's my man Oswald's brand. Um, Oz, I don't, I'll, that's my man Oz's line, and I actually have smelled a couple of his fragrances, and um, they were very, very, very niche also. Um, I feel like Henley, I like Oz, I like Oz's work also, I can't lie, but I feel like Henley is, Henley is, is, whew, on point. My favorite from Savoir Faire is Whiskey Rose, me too. Catch my whiff, you're on point, my man. Um, I forgot one brand, Centauri Perfumes, definitely. Centauri, my man, Fragrance View, Peter. Um, I own, I own Gaia from Centauri Perfumes, that honey, earthy scent. Um, add Healy as well. Yes, Micah, Healy is also awesome. Much lighter fragrances, though, um, but yeah. I just got a sample from the new house called Les Abstray. Les Abstray. Hmm. First impressions are good. Okay. See, my man, you got me blown. Oh, gosh. See, now I'm going to be like, just like spending all kinds of money on sample packs just to talk about them on this live, on this channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I am definitely, definitely checking all of these out. It's like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking all of these fragrance lines out, guys. Like, seriously. Um, Descendre is immense. Oh, no. You are talking my language. Jim. Jim R. Oh, no. Old school person coming on the channel again. Look, not old school person, but you know, one of my OG subs. Love that you're on here, Jim. What's going on? Very nice. I'm actually home relaxing and get the added benefit of catching one of your live streams. Cheers. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Jim, for checking this out, bro. You are the man. Um, Micah, especially if you're a fan of Polo Green or Aramis, got you. Les Indomitables, love the name. It's a great house as well. Definitely that. Um, if you like a soul note, Centauri Perfumes Gaia. <laughs> I just said that, bro. Love Gaia. Gaia is, is insane. It, Gaia is so, so beautiful. I also like the original version of Bat by, um, by Zoologist. That also has an insane um, soil tincture. Um, I would love to share the videos, but I'm the only one out of my immediate friends that wear perfumes. I need better friends. <laughs> D. Jones, thank you so much, brother. Um, I got to tell you, just put it out there, you know, put it out there. Maybe somebody needs to get into it like you do. Like, I've put on a couple of my friends. Now, a few of my friends are like, yo, E, when are you going to, the, when are you going to explore fragrance? I want to come. So, like, I'm getting my people into it. You will be able to get your people into it. Like, you know, just... You know, just share it. <laughs> but no, thank you so much. You don't have to share it. I'm just playing with you all, guys. Like, you know, do it if you want. Do it if you don't want. It, do it. Don't do it if you don't want. Do it if you want. I'm I'm grateful whether you do or not. I'm grateful that you're here. That's all that matters. And my man, Cash My Whiff, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Super Chat, I'm really, really grateful. Um... <laughs> Oh boy, uh, you're enabling my addiction, Cash My Whip, because you named a couple of things and I'm gonna be buying some sample packs. You know who else hit me up? Um, Omos from the WWE. Um, 
WWE's Omos is a fragrance enthusiast, and um, he put me on to a fragrance <laughs> brand. In case you all are wondering who Omos is, this is my man, uh, really, really good brother. Oops. This is Omos right here. This is my man right here. This brother right here, seven foot whatever. I had to, when I looked up at this dude, I mean, I looked up, you know? <laughs> and uh, 400 and some odd pounds. This is the Nigerian giant Omos from the WWE. Um, by the way, getting really, really good at his craft, I got to tell you guys. But anyway, this brother put me on to an amazing, an amazing fragrance brand that he was like, you got to try, you got to try. I'm not telling you all what it is yet because I'm getting a sample pack. When I get that sample pack, you'll all know. But I got to tell you, the line is really, really interesting. And they have two lines and they're all about aromatherapy. So I'm also, I'm also, I'm really, really grateful for Omos for putting me on. Um, that brother did an amazing job with it. So yeah, guys, um, I've been, I've been on here for an hour and a half. This is insane. Yeah, I know, right? Dude is a unit. <laughs> that is a funny visual. Oh, no. Yeah, he is uh, definitely, definitely, um, definitely not a small guy. You know, definitely not a small guy at all. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for coming on my live. It was an absolute pleasure to see you all again. It is a pleasure as always. I'm going to check you all next week, hopefully. God sparing life, um, Wednesday next week, 6 to 7 at my home, Bergdorf Goodman. By the way, guys, come to Bergdorf Goodman if you're in New York. Let me give you a tour. Let me show you where all the, the frequencies you need to know about are, you know. Um, I'd be honored. It, it's always an amazing experience to meet you all. So I love to meet people from my audience. So come through to Bergdorf when you have a time. And um, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much again for that. Uh, for that, for that um, super chat, catch my whiff. You are the absolute man. Thank you so much, Micah. So grateful for you all. I'm E. This is my weird tie. And this is simply put, Senza. And I'm simply O U T. Peace. Come through anytime, Micah. Anytime.